the uh, me and Mr. Crocker, his client, my client, and the aunt in this case, maybe go into a breakout room and see what we can come up with while we're waiting for Ms. Hollyer. Well, let's see, Mr. Cro okay, thank you, Ms. McPherson. Mr. Crocker, are you amenable to that? Yeah, I've, I've sent notice to everyone I could uh, yesterday and today that I think we got a resolution to this matter. We just need to put some some fine points to it, Your Honor. Okay. Did you get my email, Mr. Crocker? Let me let me see, Ms. McPherson, Mr. Crocker, and Ms. Uh, Ms. Bennett, and whom else? Ms. Simeon, and then also the father. And Ms. Simeon, and is your client on 162? I believe so, Your Honor. Okay. Damn, Mom. Mr. Williams? Yes, ma'am. You're going to be invited to a breakout room? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Williams, look at your phone, and uh, because you may need to press a button. So, and I think I have the Bennett's on the same device. If you all will stand by, I'll set uh, the timer for ten minutes. We'll finish before that. Uh, go ahead and exit yourselves. Your please. Honor, thank you for allowing us more than ten minutes because we have a we have an agreement. <laughs> all right. Well, wonderful. That was time well spent then i believe we are still waiting for ms hollier i think uh, she may be logging on any any moment now ms walker if you need to visit with the attorneys um just let me know we might wait for ms hollier That may not be a bad idea to at least uh, have a heads up to what the agreement is. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we've nominated you as the person that transports the child. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you, seem, you seem to be closest. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess we better get you in the mix, huh? <laughs> I'm just guessing the agreement that Ms. Walker envisions uh, has her being dismissed. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, no <laughs> I don't think she's going to be booted. I, I, I have oh, to she be is back. She is no, back. No, no, if I'm not here, it's bad. So That's no. What I thought for you anyway. No, I left the breakout room. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Okay, and I, I have, uh, Ms. McPherson, I had placed your client in the waiting room because his device kept unmuting. Uh, and so I brought him back in, just, uh, just FYI. So, all right, it looks like everyone is back here, is back. So at this time, you all can either announce an agreement or... I'll take closing arguments. We have an agreement, Your Honor. Okay, who wants to announce it? I guess I'm the one starting, so <laughs> I'll announce the agreement, Your Honor. Um, Deborah drafting, take impeccable notes. I think so, Michelle, Michelle agreed to draft. Okay, I that's I don't remember point. saying that, but... I don't know. Oaken was pretty good. Um. Except for the line down the middle, Your Honor, and that that didn't stop me. Um. So the the agreement is, Your Honor, for the father, Mr. Will Kenneth Williams, and the Bennetts, um, to be uh, joint managing conservators, with the Bennetts being the primary. Uh, there's a modified standard possession order, um, for the first and third weekends and a modified standard possession order for the summer visitations until the child turns age five until the child turns five years of age the summer visitation for mr williams will be two weeks from july 1st through july 15th after five years of age it will be a standard possession order for the summers 
Um, if they're living a hundred miles apart, it is already designated your honor from July 1st through July 31st. That the parties are still under a hundred. Um, there will be the pickup and drop offs as long as the Bennett's are living in their same residence will be by Miss Simeon or a designated adult and the pickup and drop off will be at the Bennett's residence. If the Bennett's, there's a geographic restriction, your honor, to Houston County and Tyler County and the contiguous counties to those two counties. Um, if the Bennett's move from those counties, they will be responsible for the pickup and drop offs. There will be um, another modification for the standard possession order that there will be no Thursdays and no child's birthdays. Mother's Day weekend will be per the standard possession order for Mrs. Bennett. Father's Day is modified for whoever has, is entitled to possession and access. Of course, the standard possession order language, you know, if there's a holiday or a federal holiday for the weekends. There is based on my client, Mr. Williams being on SSI, uh, we're asking that no child support, no medical support, no unreimbursed medical support. Is is there an agreement to good cause? I, I believe you're, there is your honor, except I think Ms. Hollier wants some designation in there for the medical support. <laughs> um, but she can address that. I'll, I'll hear from her. And certainly. then whoever, uh, there'll be some virtual visits for who's ever not in possession um, Saturdays from between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. for 15 to 30 minutes. I'm sorry, 10 a to, did you say 6 p.m. on Saturdays. And that goes for both, um, both. Okay, that makes sense. I understand. It's reciprocal, Your yeah. Honor. For reciprocal as between Mr. Williams and the Bennett's, right? Right. Okay, okay. Did I miss anything? My notes indicate we have no contact for mother. That's it. And, and non-possessory for mother. Right. Your Honor, I'm going to have to have a court finding on that. I cannot agree to that. So I, I'll, I'd request a ruling regarding the mother's possessory or lack of possessory in status. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And I, I will address that uh, shortly. Okay. Anything else, um, Ms. McPherson, Mr. Crocker, Ms. Walker, Ms. Hollier so far? So Ms. Uh, Ms. Uh, Simeon won't have um, any other uh, conservatorship or rights other than perhaps a duty if she acquiesces to uh, provide uh, transport pickup and drop off wise. Well, and, and I guess I, I get to be more clear. I, so she could just go drop him off at, or drop her off at Mr. Williams' home, or I thought there was an agreement that she would be the supervisor. Is that not not the agreement? That is correct. Okay, so it's agreement that Miss Simeon will continuously supervise Dad's contact. Contact. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's what I thought we talked about, but I just wasn't sure. And Miss McPherson didn't say that. Can we add or a designated competent adult? No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. maybe if we had met them before today well sure yeah. and I, I think we've gotten a, a full home study on miss simeon and and she's definitely appropriate and that's appropriate because okay they could just bring aunt jane up here who, yeah. okay so is the agreement that these Overnights, the standard possession order modified, take place under Ms. Simeon's roof or Mr. Williams' roof, supervised by her? I don't think we've designated where it has to occur, Your Honor. It's just who she would have to be there. Okay. The whole, the whole time. 
morning, noon, and night. Very good. Right. Very good. Okay, y'all may continue. Am I calling my witness, or, or is there anything else for Ms. Hollyer? Well, <laughs> I just want to make sure. The parents to be ordered to pay child support and, and or duty to carry health insurance, and if not that, then at least the the out of pocket medical, um, at least as a duty as a parent. And your honor, under the code, um, which we just went through, you can't include SSI as net resources. And if you can't include it as net resources, it can't be included uh, for unreimbursed, which is also considered child support. No, that code is definitely not in what's in the best interest of the child. I believe you're entitled to make up to a certain amount of income before it affects your your SSI, so there is the possibility of income. We just don't have any testimony regarding that. Well, are the are the Bennett's going to be obliged to carry insurance? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it, it's not going to be a, a Medicaid situation. No. All right. Unless the court can order dad to maintain uh, government health insurance on the child, he would probably qualify. That would be wonderful. All he'd have to do is apply for it. As a managing conservator. I would want to hear from the dad and the Bennett's and, and you, Ms. Hollier. Uh, as to basically Medicaid versus the private insurance. Okay. Because the agreement is uh, Bennett's and Dad, JMC. Correct. All right. Uh, as to the agreement, anything else, Mr. Crocker, um, Ms. Walker, Ms. Hollier? I think it would be go without saying. I don't know if it needs to be put in there that the Bennett's obviously are going to claim her on their taxes. Yeah, and they they would right would be the only ones entitled to do that. Yeah. Right. Other than some findings regarding mother's contact versus no contact and this health care insurance information, that's going to be uh, everything as far as the agreement. I'm okay, and I'll let you all uh, put on uh, your clients and, and some testimony. Um, just in case Ms. Simeon cannot perform her role, I'm wondering about the competent adult thing, if the Bennett's and somehow if the Bennett's and Mr. Williams could agree to somebody, should Ms. Simeon be unwilling or unable to continue as the supervisor. Did, did you all not hear me or did you just- oh, We did, I'm just trying to think, Your, Your Honor. Honor but oh. This agreement was kind of, I believe, reached on the fact that Miss Simeon has a approved home study. And, and uh, you know, Mr. Williams has a very large family, but we're comfortable with this because she's been vetted her family's her her immediate family's been vetted and no and so that, no that that's why it's difficult i think to answer that question well i just was the home study just on her or was her husband included in that well i, I can't find the raise your hand button but uh, <laughs> i'm sorry i couldn't find the raise your hand button your honor um, but the home study was on myself, my husband, and my three children. Yes, your immediate family. Yes. Yes. Right. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Because if something happens, you know, visits will come to a screeching halt. Uh, is the mother Helen Kyles present? I'm sorry, y'all can put your hands down for a second. My apologies. Helen Kyles, Helen Kyles, Helen Kyles. 
Your Honor, we sent notice uh, to her home regarding the court hearing starting at nine. Uh, we made uh, several phone calls to her to let her know that uh, it had changed to noon. Um, we were not able to get in touch with her. She is not with me, um, but we did attempt to notify her of this. Okay. But this, this um, out, outside of the visitation, my client was very comfortable with the child remaining with the Bennetts. Yeah. All right, thank you. And that's, uh, that's Ms. Bytewood, uh, the mother's attorney at Lightham. All right, thank you. All right, calling for Kenneth Williams. Uh, Mr. Williams, if uh, you can unmute and just simply Are you announce. Me? Okay, yes, sir, Mr. Williams, you're, thank yes. you. All right, yes, sir. and then Mr. and Mrs. Bennett. Yes, sir. Here. All right. Thank you. We have both the, the Bennett's present. So now let's try it again. If you all will once again, raise your right hands to be sworn, please. Do you all swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this matter is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Okay. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um, Ms. Walker, you may, as the petitioner, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. I would call um, Jasmine Lyon. And Ms. Lyons, in regards to um, a resolution for this case, um, are you aware of um, the proposed agreement um, between the uh, father, uh, Mr. Williams, and uh, the caregivers, uh, the Bennetts? Yes. And that they uh, would be named joint managing conservators. Yes. And are you also aware of uh, the visitation plan in regards to Mr. Williams? Yes. And the um, Miss Simeon supervising um, whatever visitations uh, that Mr. Uh, Williams will have? Yes. And is it the department's agreement also um, that the mother should be a uh, non-possessory conservator with no contact at all with the child? Yes. Um, anything else that uh, the department wants to make the court aware of at this time? And also, well, first of all, you're asking to be dismissed. Um, once the court names a uh, permanent managing or joint managing conservators. Yes. Okay. Anything else um, that the court needs to be aware of as to um, the department's um, view as a resolution that's in the best interest of, of the child? No. Thank you. I'll pass the witness, Sean. All right, thank you. Any questions from anyone for Ms. Lyons. I, I have a few, Your Honor. Sure. All right. Uh, Ms. Lyons, you just testified that my client, Ms. Kyles, needs to be a non possessory and have absolutely no contact with this child. Is that correct? Yes. Right. And you understand that a non possessory has absolutely no rights, duties, or responsibilities outside of possibly paying child support, but she's unable to do that so do you agree with that yes and and are you testifying about this because of you know even though it's kind of been cut up a little bit we're in trial and you had some extensive testimony regarding um, the mental health problems the drug usage the instability and um the the problems that Miss Kyle has just in her own life. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. And is that why you're asking for such an extraordinary step is to have a parent uh, pretty much have her rights terminated without having her rights terminated? Yes. Okay. And that's absolutely in the best interest of this child. Is that true? Yes. Um, would the appointment of Ms. Kyles as any type of possessory conservator be detrimental to the child's physical or emotional well-being? Yes. 
has she proven that in the past during her interactions with this child? Yes. Um, is there anything that you can think of that would assist her more than what you provided for her to, to be able to be a part of this child's life? No. All right. Um, you've exhausted all of your resources in, in trying to get Miss Kyle's mentally, emotionally, and physical, physically stable? Yes. Okay. And is your opinion that she is still unstable? Yes. All right. When was the last time you had any type of contact with her or saw her? It would have been last month. All right. And do you recall that interaction? Yes. Um, how did that go? Um, speaking, just speaking about the case, Ms. Kyle's became upset and began to yell. Um, oh. Okay, and just speaking about the case, what was the triggering moment that that um, made her start getting upset and and start yelling, if you know? I don't know. All right, you were just talking to the to her about the case and she got very upset and started yelling? I told her hello and she went on a rant. Okay, so you greeted her and, and you it sounds like you weren't even able to get to the case part to, to her yet. Yes. All right, and were you able to have any type of conversation with her after hello and then her rant? No, I wasn't able to interrupt her and say anything. Um, I tried, but she just kept talking. All right. And um, was she at the office? No, she was at home. Right. And did you did you leave at that point? Yes. All right. Um, you also testified about absolutely no contact, not even supervised. I don't know anyone that would be willing to supervise contact with Miss Kyle's. All right. When hello sets you off, it kind of you're not sure what the rest of the conversation would be during a, a supervised visit. Is that true? Yes. Correct. And she's not had any contact with this child for a significant period of time because of her conduct at previous visits. Is that true? Yes. All right. And is that what you're basing your recommendation on is um, all of that? Yes. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I'll pass you as a witness. Thank you. Uh, just because you had brought up and raised this question, Ms. Lyons, um, on the home study for Ms. Simeon, uh, does she also, in the home was, and I, I'm hopefully I say this name right, was it Evel Germain? Yes. And then three adult children, one Evel Germain who's 26, a uh, Kevon, 25. And I really hope I say this name right. Ammon to me, age 22. Yes, it was three adult children. Okay. And with those in the home, her home study was approved, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Would those individuals been approved to be uh, alternate caretakers if yes. necessary? Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll pass you as a witness. Ms. Lines, uh, each one of those children were were bedded in order to have her alone uh, is it in the home study, is that correct? Or do you know? I don't know, but they passed the... Um... Well, they, were, they passed to be able to be around the child, but do you know specifically if they were designated to be the caretaker? You don't, don't, you don't, don't know, do you? Okay, so you're unsure to that question. If Taylor would have went to the Simeon's home, home they would have been approved to be uh, babysitters. Okay, so then they were vetted in order to actually be able to take care of her alone. Yes. Okay, all right. Um, and of course, Miss Simeon uh, and her family um, uh, appear to be willing and uh, appropriate to make decisions for this child while in their care. Would you agree? Yes. 
Okay. Um, if, um, as the judge brings up, Ms. Simeon cannot uh, supervise, uh, do you think maybe a halfway agreement or something that could assist language in the order that um, as long as this Ms. Simeon and the Bennett's agree to a alternate person being the supervisor, that that could be something that could help? Yes. Situation? Okay. Um, Miss, uh, to your knowledge, the Bennett's and Miss Simeon have been communicating um, and, and really helped develop this agreement. Is that true? Yes, to my knowledge. All right. All right. And so it appears that they can communicate well and make some good decisions on behalf of this little girl. Yes. Passive. And I do, Your Honor. Okay, go ahead. Just, just to be clear, ma'am, within the home study, you're telling me that each one of the members of the household was vetted as to whether they would be su suitable supervisors for visitation with this child. If the child was placed in the Bennett home, um, the program director would have approved for them to be babysitters due to the clean background check and CPS check. The, the, the Simeon home? Yes. Okay. We've got one, Kayvon, that doesn't live at home full time. He goes back and forth between homes, right? Yes. Okay. And then we've got one that is off at Texas Tech, right? Yes. So those two were appropriate? Yes. How much contact have they had with this child? I don't believe they had any. Taylor wasn't placed in the home. Pass the witness. No further witnesses at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay, just taking our, our usual pattern in course, Ms. McPherson, you may call your client. Uh, yes, Mr. Williams. There you go. Yes, ma'am. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, we can. So, let's, Mr. Mr. Williams, oh, go ahead. In. Were you sworn in, Mr. Williams? Well, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I raised my right hand. Okay, perfect. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so Mr. Williams, did you hear the agreement that was put on the record and what we discussed also in the room? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you understand it and are you in agreement with it? Hey, I'm agreeing with it. Yes, ma'am. I'm agreeing with it. Okay. Do you think that's in Taylor's best interest? Well, you know, like I said, you know, I'm I'm handicapped, and my mother, she kind of. Well, hang on, it. Mr. I, Williams. We're not non-responsive. Are you? Do you believe that this is in his in Taylor's best interest? Yes, yes or no? Okay. Yes. Okay. Now there was some questions. I know if I don't ask it, someone else will. So, are you currently on um, SSI? Yes, ma'am. Is that your only income that you receive a month? Yes, ma'am. And is that based on a disability? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You don't get any other income? No, ma'am. Well, I get a little food stamps. You call that income. Okay, but nothing, nothing other than food stamps and SSI? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I'm not even sure if this can be ordered. Are you, do you even know if you would be able to apply to get Taylor on government insurance? I don't know how to go by there doing it. If somebody showed me, I, I would do that for her. Okay. You would do whatever, what's ever necessary to help your child out, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask you just um, if Miss Simeon wasn't able to supervise, it has to be someone that's approved as well by Miss, Miss, you know, the Bennett's um, and this court, obviously, at this point. Would you have any problems with any of 
her husband or her children supervising a visit? No, I don't care. You know, I just want to see her. I, I, I'll be happy for them to come see how we react too, you know. Okay. I'll okay. You just want to be able to see your child. Yes, ma'am. Okay. You want to have a relationship with her. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I'll pass you as a witness. Okay. Thank you. Any questions from anyone for Mr. Williams? Yes, okay. I, we understand you're on, on Social Security, right? Well, they call it SSI. I, I, I guess that's what it is, Social Security. Yeah, okay, we'll call it SSI. That's that's where you get your check from, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you make any other money, like doing stuff around town or anything like that? I can't even hard to pick up, and then I can't do no work. Okay, so, so you don't? No. Okay. Okay. Do you have any money saved up or anything like that? I got a few hundred dollars at this credit mobile credit union bank. Okay. Put up. Okay. Very good. Um, I pass the witness, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone for Mr. Williams? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Now, as soon as I said we're going to go in our usual order, we did not. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> Mom usually comes after the petitioner. So, Ms. Bythewood, I'll back up. Any witnesses? I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to call Dwayne Keating. Okay, very good. Mr. Keating? Very good. Ms. Bythewood just called you. You might have heard. I did, I did not. That's what was right. I had just stepped away. Sorry. Oh. Uh, okay. Yes, Ms. Bythewood. <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize, Dwayne. That's the way it always works out. It is. Um, <laughs> sir, could you state your name and your relationship to this case? Dwayne Keating. I'm the guardian ad litem for the mother. All right. And you are her guardian ad litem because um, of her, her mental and emotional uh, disabilities? Yes. And at, at this time, you understand that what the parties are proposing is something that I cannot agree to um, as, as her guardian ad litem. Uh, what is, what is your recommendation? I, I am in agreement with the part agreement of the parties. I don't think that she's competent to provide sa a safe environment for this child. I don't think she's going to be able to, I agree with Ms. Lyon's testimony a hundred percent. Um, based upon my interactions with her, based upon her actions and visits, and based upon her response in your office and phone calls from me, um, I just don't I don't see that that Miss Kyles is capable of controlling her emotions, and I really don't think that she's capable of fully understanding. Um, the impact or implications of what she does. All right. Um, if if she has a hard time with the casual greeting, hello, are you concerned about how she would interact with the child even under good conditions? I'm very concerned about that. And that I don't know that there would be anyone uh, that would be able to control Ms. Kyle's. I, I I have not been able to. Um, it appears that you are not able to <laughs> without assistance. So, um, unfortunately, and and it is it is truly with with regret that I I say this because I hate to see any parent not have any kind of contact with their child. But without some some major assistance. And I, I, I don't even know that there is any assistance that would be available to her based upon my reading of her psychological um, that that could be offered her that would offer that that would provide her the assistance necessary to learn how to be a parent. And and I'm glad you brought that up. Um, that was testified to a while back. But realistically, um, are you really in agreement with the psychological that said that she might have the ability to be a parent? 
no, I'm not. I, I don't see that at all. And um, no, I don't see that at all. Okay. Was it concerning that a, a professional came to that conclusion after we had spent some significant time with her and kind of came to the opposite conclusion? Yes, very. that is a little bit concerning. All right. And, um, you know, we, we have different roles in this case, but do you believe that it would be harmful to Helen? Um, you know, and I'm, I'm reversing this. I know that we talk about the best interest of the child, but I'm talking about the best interest of Helen. Do you believe that it would be harmful to Helen to put her in a position to where she stressed out is the only term that's coming to my mind right now. So I'm going to use it to where she would be stressed out by just the basics of dealing with the baby. I, that's why my reference to the unregrettable that I said that she, I don't think she can, has the ability to be a parent. And I think that when she is placed in that situation, she's been shown just by her actions to uh, be overwhelmed. And, and, and her actions have shown basically that she doesn't know what to do. She, she acts inappropriately. Um, we've heard testimony as to what she's done in visits. Um, I'm not going to go back over that. It's, it's some, it's very concerning to hear what she used to do. Um, and, and I think, again, it's always hard to, to make this kind of a judgment about another person. It's not my job necessarily, but it is my job to make recommendations here. And, and based upon what I have seen, what I've heard, and everything that I know about Miss Kyles, I don't think Helen is competent to, to care for a child at all. And it, it would be extremely stressful for her if she were to be placed in a situation in which she had to deal with the child and, and let's say the child had a, you know, a two-year-old moment, which they all do. Um, she, she would not know how to respond and probably would respond totally and completely inappropriately. All right. And, and like the way she has, but even with her inappropriate behavior, she has justified those behaviors. Is that true? She's tried to, let's put it like that. <laughs> well, but in her mind, she did nothing wrong. And this and, was the appropriate response, no matter how bizarre it might be to uh, someone else. I, that's why I said she's tried to. She's done it to herself. Um, I don't think that there's any way that she could justify it to any of us that, Correct. you know, are here, are here on, a, on a different, in a different competency level. I'm not going to say we're all competent <laughs> because I don't think that myself, but of myself, but I don't think that I don't think she is able to do that. Right. And and then you add in the self-medication and um, you the get drug the, use is obviously a, the drug use is obviously a, a major issue, too. Right. Right. No, I understand completely. Um, so it, it is with sadness you're recommending that um, the judge not appoint her as a conservator and make a finding that um, she is to have no contact with this child? Absolutely. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate your, your work on this and I'll pass you as a witness. All right. Thank you. Any questions from anyone for Mr. Keating? Anyone? All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Keating. Thank you very much. Any other witnesses, Ms. Bythewood? Uh, yes, sir. I, I know that Mr. Crocker is going to call his client, but I did want to call Ms. Bennett just for uh, a moment regarding visitation. Very good. <laughs> I, I kind of caught you unaware, I'm sorry. Okay. I mean, Ma'am, could you please state your name and your relationship to the child? Courtney Bennett and I'm her foster parent. Right. And, and you have um, had uh, chances to actually see Miss Helen with this child. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. In the beginning. Yes, ma'am. All right. And you seem to have a very loving heart regarding Helen in the, in the 
issues that she has. Um, that's, that's not even a question, that's a statement. My question is, your concern is this child, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. All right, and with your loving heart, do you see any circumstances in which Helen can have any type of relationship with this baby? Um, unfortunately, no, due to her situation, I really don't ever see her being able to be able to properly care for Taylor. Right. And, and we're not even talking about properly care for, I'm just talking about a visit, a hug, a hold. Um, do you believe that based on her behaviors and previous visits that you witnessed that that would be detrimental to the physical and emotional well-being of this child? Very much so. Yes. And I'm turning it around as well. Do you also believe that it would be detrimental to Helen to put her in that type of stressful situation? Yes, ma'am. All right. And, and that's what I was going to just limit myself to asking you about. Okay. So you would also be asking the judge for those reasons to have absolutely no contact with this child? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you so much. And I'll pass you as a witness. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any questions from anyone for Ms. Bennett? All right, uh, thank you. Any other witnesses, Ms. Bytewood? No, Your Honor, I have no further Mr. witnesses. Parker, you may call your first. Thank you, Your Honor, I would call Courtney Bennett. I was just gonna call Ms. Simeon, but I can wait. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, well, look, Okay, we'll we'll come back uh, to Ms. McPherson since Ms. Bennett is, is warmed up and unmuted. <laughs> this is Bennett. With respect to the proposed court order and the agreement that we put um, today for all the parties to consider, um, you understand the terms and conditions of the agreement that we've made, right? Yes, sir. And it deals with conservatorship, it deals with visitation, and it deals, deals with geographic restrictions, it deals with another parent hopefully having zero contact. And all that considering, you want the court to approve this because you feel like it's in the child's best interest. Yes, sir. And you understand that this would be a final order, not subject to change unless new litigation was uh, started for a modification suit or something of that nature. Yes, sir. The hope is, is that this order remains in place for the duration of the child's life. Yes, sir. And with that being said, you want the court to approve this agreement? Yes, sir. Okay. Your Honor, I would pass Mrs. Bennett. All right, thank you. Any questions from anyone for Ms. Bennett? I think I've already said that. Okay, thank you, thank you. Um, so let me, I'll, I'll back up. Ms. McPherson, uh, back to your case. Uh, did you wanna call Ms. Simeon, you say? I do, Your Honor. Okay, and one more thing. Let me, while she's getting unmuted and she was sworn, um, Let me just toss this grenade and we can talk about it in due course. Uh, any uh, Anything regarding any possible name change. So, Ms. McPherson, with that, you may uh, Ms. proceed with Ms. Simeon. Um, yes, uh, Ms. Simeon, um, I know that you're not a party to this case, but you're the one that's been designated to supervise and to transport Taylor for your brother Kenneth Williams' visitation. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And are you in agreement to, to, to be in that role? Yes. Um, now, there was a question um, if something was to happen to you, which we don't want anything to happen to you. And we're not wishing that we're not, oh, none of that. But, um, and I know that you'd probably get with Miss Bennett, but is there someone that, 
that you would more than likely try to be the designated person if you couldn't do it? Uh, outside of my husband and children? Well, those are the ones in the home study. So I outside think you of had them. So it would be um, my sister, a little uh, background checked and everything. And also my mother was background checked in uh, whatever CPS does. Well, CPS will be out. Yeah, so but I'm saying those are the only other two people that uh, pretty much that I have. My sister and my mother. All right, now that Beverly is re residing where, where your brother lives, right? No, ma'am. Oh, that's okay. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> and and do you would you like them to be named if possible, or do you believe that you and Miss Bennett can come up and have it in the court order uh, and by mutual agreement for someone to, to be the supervisor or a designated competent adult? if you cannot fulfill those duties? Uh, I think the Bennett's and I will be able to come up with an agreement. So put that in there, that a mutual agreement for a, a substitute? Yes. Since Alternate. I mean, yeah. There's already like five people. So I think we can agree with someone if none of those will work. Because nothing's happening to you, but just no, in case. <laughs> I guess, ma'am, I understand. Okay. Um, and and I know that you, you know, you talked to your, your brother and he's the one that's going to be the joint managing. But do you think also you, you've been the one visiting with, with you know, your niece and, and you've seen the visits with him and, and all that. Do you think that this agreement is in the child's best interest? Yes, ma'am. Um, and are you looking forward to also facilitating not only the visits with him, but just so that she can experience your side of the family as well? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there anything else that um, you want to tell this court? I know that you had the option of being placement. Um, and and Tell us why you, you, you chose because you didn't want, why didn't you choose to be placement? Miss McPherson, you put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, uh, like I told everyone before, I'm just here for Taylor, to, for her best interest. And I felt as if uh, sister, nothing, um, so to say, was wrong with where she was at with her placement with the Bennett. So I didn't feel comfortable, comfortable taking her away. And I felt that I could come up with something that we all could agree to. And hopefully this will be ordered and we can move forward. You want the judge to approve this order and the agreements? Yes. Um, and that also helps with your brother's visits and things like that too, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, unless there's something else, sorry for putting you on the spot, but <laughs> other than that, um, thank you very, very much. Um, and I will pass you as a witness. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from anyone for Ms. Simeon? All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Simeon. Thank you. Any other witnesses, Ms. McPherson? No, Your Honor. Right. Thank you. Okay. Back to you, Mr. Crocker. You may call your next. Daryl Bennett, please. All right. Yes, sir. Daryl, you've heard the proposed agreement that we've outlined before the court dealing with the conservatorship, the visitation, uh, geographic restriction, uh, transportation of this child, correct? Yes, sir. Want the court to approve that? Yes, sir. You feel like it's in the child's best interest at this time? Yes, sir. All right. I passed the witness, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Any questions from anyone for Mr. Bennett? Anyone? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Any other witnesses, Mr. Crocker? No, Your Honor. Thank you. 
Uh, Ms. Hollier, any witnesses? I don't have any witnesses, but I am in a dual role, Your Honor. And man, I just can't say enough of, for this little girl how this could not be a better agreement with giving her the people that have pretty much raised her her entire life, but also thanking Miss Simeon and her family and what she's willing uh, to do for the father to give uh, this little girl um, an opportunity to love and know her family. Um, I, I'm just so, I can't believe that we've made an agreement. I just appreciate the Bennett's and Miss Simeon and Mr. Williams so much and the department for assisting with this. Um, and so it is my recommendation that this is in her best interest. I'm asking the court to follow the agreement. All right, Ms. Hollier, thank you. Um, any Anything concerning uh, any name change? Your Honor, I have a question. Um, my my office is a little uh, in disarray right now. Um, Mr. Crocker's pleadings, uh, if I could ask, Ms. Mr. Crocker, did you ask for a name change with all of your pleadings? I would highly doubt it because that would have been on an order of adoption. So I will double check. We did not. We did not, Ms. Spifewood. And I understand where the judge is coming from, and I would have a totally different position if I represented a different individual in the case. I would have to object to any type of request for a name change as it was not pled. All right, and I, I take that to mean in part that you would not be amenable to a trial amendment. I could... I would have to object to such. Okay. All right. Anything else from anyone else? Uh, right. I haven't. I know that the child's last name is Kyle's. I did not have a conversation with the father about changing the last name to Williams. Um, I think he would like the last name to be Williams. Um, and I would ask for trial amendment if that is what he would like, Your Honor. <laughs> Um, Can I reopen some evidence regarding this? It's it's not necessarily so geared towards the last name of the child. It's my clients are having some incredible difficulties with the birth records and things of that nature. I think we need some explanation on that. You, right. You, uh, go ahead, Ms. Bythewood. What? Yeah, I, I believe that the child has like three middle names and, and one of them is, is long. Um, you know, the family is very specific in, in what my role is. So we do not acknowledge Mr. Williams as the father. And unfortunately that's my position. Okay. Not, notwithstanding my having adjudicated him. I understand. Or, or the DNA test, or the fact that she looks a little like him. Okay, okay, all right, very good. So, actually, I, I don't think uh, you've rested. So, we will uh, reopen the evidence. And, uh, Mr. Crocker, if you wanted to call your next, if, if, I'd recall Courtney Bennett. All right. Yes, sir. Mrs. Mrs. Bennett, could you kind of explain to the court some difficulties that you're having uh, with respect to these birth records? Yes, sir. Um, Jasmine can probably explain it better, but she was not registered at birth from what I understand because she was born at home. And so Jasmine's been working. She's had to get all kinds of medical documents, all, ki all kinds of information. It's taken her a long time um, to get all of this. And she submitted it, but hasn't gotten the answer yet. We don't have a birth certificate and we don't have a social security number for Taylor. All right. So the question is this. What name or what documentation do you have that has this child's name on it? We have the the documents when we got her with um, all of her names, CPS documents. Okay. You heard Mrs. Bythewood talk about there's like three middle names for this child. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. So, do you have some concerns that if if CPS is out of this case today, that this this issue is not going to be addressed in its finality? I I do. I hope. I hope I mean, we have to have it to, you know, file for taxes and all that. I'm going to have to have it for school and other things. Right. But we, I mean, we, we've got to have that, that documentation. And Jasmine assures me that she's working on it. I don't know where in the process um, we're at, but she has told me that she is working on it. Okay. Um, is there anything else with respect to the name problem or the registration of the birth issue that we need to address? No, no, sir. Not that I can think of. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I, I, would, I have a few questions. I, I need to pass her, Your Honor. Okay. Very, very good. And I, I want to elicit from somebody, what is her, what's the understanding that her current name is? Okay. Okay. Uh, Ms. Bennett, is it your understanding that her current name is Taylor and A. V. Vani? Yes, that's right. Okay. Do you believe being a primary caretaker of this little girl and her not having any contact whatsoever with Ms. Helen Kyles, that that would certainly be confusing, um, would not be in her best interest would come with so many sorts of questions in the future for this young lady. I do. I really do. Um, are are y'all are y'all making a request uh, for a name change uh, because of all those reasons? We would like to have her name changed. Yes. To what? Um, Williams. Okay. I mean, okay. her dad's last name. That would be okay. Fine. Just something that she can you know, uh, identify be, with yes, when, she, when she, and maybe, I, mean, I don't know if the middle names have any, uh, family sentimental value to that side of the family, maybe shorten those names. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't bother us, but you know, you know, sure. But it certainly complicates having to fill out a Scantron form <laughs> when you have to list and bubble mm -hmm. each mm -hmm. one of those names, correct? Yes. And that follows you through getting a driver's license, um, mm -hmm. awards at school, yes. being announced in plays and, and things like that. Um, it, it just complicates her diploma. things. Her diploma. Just maybe change it to Taylor Jordan Williams. Something and, short. and do you believe that that would honor Mr. Williams as the father, since he's definitely going to be playing a key role in her life, and for her to have some identity to a active parent who's going to be involved in her life. Yes, ma'am. How we do. And you think that's in her best interest? Yes, ma'am. Do you think it would be detrimental to her interest to keep it the way it is? Yes, I think it would cause a, a lot of questions when she gets older. And then if the department is dismissed and you're not today and you're not real sure of where Jasmine's at on getting the delayed birth certificate, um, you're asking the department to stay in to, to get that done. Yes, we have girl. to have that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, and I know it's very difficult to get a delayed <laughs> birth certificate and um, but but that needs to that assistance needs to occur for this little girl, right? Yes. yes. Yes, and Jasmine has worked diligently on yes, it. Yes, I believe that she really has. Yes, it's I, it's I been just a big ordeal. Uh -huh. I just didn't want. Uh, I know Miss Walker really wants her to go away, <laughs> but I just didn't want that to be left open. Um, right. Is there anything else that you can think of that is not covered in this agreement um, that we haven't already talked about? And we also. Um, Agreement in agreement. If he can get her placed on his on insurance, sure. that would be amazing. Mr. Sure. sure, and I think that 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 wouldn't. It seems like Mr. Williams is definitely um, willing to apply for any government health insurance, um, and I think language could be put in there that he tried to do that, and if that is not um, viable, then. So a managing conservator has to cover her own health insurance. Y'all understand that? Right. Yes. Yeah. But it does sound like Mr. Williams is willing to get her whatever she needs. Right. And if if he is de denied, then we can 
They have to have a denial letter. We can place her on our insurance. Okay, so that would assist you to be able yes. just to add her without any yes. incurred costs? Yes. Okay, all right. Yes. So I guess the, the final order needs to state that uh, Mr. Williams has the duty to at least apply for government assistance, okay. health insurance assistance, um, obtain either an approval and maintain that, or if he gets a denial, to turn over that denial to you guys so y'all can provide it to your insurance company to obtain health insurance on her. Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Do you think that would resolve that question? Yes, ma'am. For sure. All right. Um, anything else? Mm, I don't think so. I think that that the insurance and the name right. change and, um, would be great. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. All right. Pass the letters. Well, in your honor, if I may briefly interject, I re went back through all my pleadings. In fact, I did ask for a change of name on the pleading that was filed in time stamp 518 of 22 at 824 a.m. Last page, paragraph 16, under sealing of records and change of name. I will read, quote, interveners request a court to order the sealing of the file in the minutes of the court. Interveners request that the child's name be changed as requested in the order of adoption. So there's been a general request for name change. I, I thought there had. That's why I had asked about the, those pleadings. I just couldn't put my hands on them. It, well, and I couldn't either. And that's why I started scrambling. I knew it had to be in there. Ms. Bythewood knew she had read it somewhere. <laughs> in the case. In your Honor, I also know somewhere there there is um, my client had filled out uh, paperwork for the birth certificate. Again, I can't put my hands on it, but but it's somewhere. Okay. I, I, we, maybe Miss Lyons can uh, update us. I believe Miss we'll, um, Seaton well, says she does have a birth verification. We'll, so we'll go back. We'll go back to Miss Lyons in just in just a moment. Um, I, I, I would like to call Mr. Williams for the name change, Your Honor. I don't think he'll have an issue, but just to get it on the record. Okay. Okay. I'm here. So go go ahead, Ms. McPherson. Uh, Mr. Williams, you heard yes, that they would like to, and the, the Bennett's are asking for the name change for Taylor to be Taylor Jordan Williams. Are you in agreement with that? Yeah, I'm agreeing with it. Okay, that's all I needed to know. And you heard the, the uh, conversation about that you will apply for like Medicaid governmental insurance and whatever letter you get back, if there's a denial letter, that needs to go to the Bennett so they can put her on their own insurance. Well, uh, I'm about to get my sister to help me with that. I don't know where to go to do that to her at. Yes, sir. We understand. <laughs> what would you do without your sister? Okay. So, um, but that's all I have for you, Mr. Williams. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any questions from anyone for Mr. Williams? Okay. Let, let me back up, uh, just a little bit. Um, uh, with the, back to the next. Let me get Mr. Williams muted. Okay. So someone give me again by, by spelling your understanding of the child's middle names. So what, what is between right now? What is between Taylor and Kyle's? N A N N A V A N I A Jordan J E N. Jordan, J-O-R-D-E-N, and then Kyle's. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and so that's your understanding of what Ms. Kyle's named the child. I, I don't want to say at the hospital because I don't think we made it there, but okay. Yes. Now. Judge. Yeah, yes, Ms. Siegel, yes. May I say something? You may, yes, ma'am. Um, I just, I have access to vital statistics 
And there is a birth record for the child in vital statistics. They may not have gotten a certificate yet, but there is a record of the birth. Now, it does not have the father listed, but it does have, of course, the mother listed in the county uh, that she was born in. Okay. And does it have the name with the spelling that you just heard Ms. Hollier give? Yes, Judge. Okay. Uh, Taylor Ann Kyles. Okay, Ms. Sego, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let me let me just pick at this a little, uh, maybe one more time before we move on. So obviously, uh, the mother disputes the DNA, uh, my finding, my adjudication, and so on. Is and I know this Jordan has an E N, but that's that's not the name of any alleged somewhere along the way or purported father by the mother, correct? Correct. That was that was not any of the names that were given. I, I don't know of any significance of the name Jordan. She didn't say. Um, so I don't know if the mother would be um, objectionable to a more traditional spelling. The pronunciation remains the same. Right. Okay, so <laughs> the, the Bennetts along with Mr. Williams um, seem to have approved of the name Taylor Jordan Kyles as an Williams. interest. Taylor Jordan Williams, I'm sorry. Taylor Jordan, my, my bad. Taylor Jordan Williams. So is that is that your agreement, Mr. and Mrs. Bennett and Mr. Williams and, and Ms. Hollier? Yes. Yes. Mr. Williams? Your Honor, when I asked him before, he said yes. So I don't know if you need him. Well, so that would be dropping uh, the two middle names that begin with A. That would be correct. Okay. And Mr. and Ms. Bennett is the spelling of Jordan uh, with an E-N uh, amenable to you, an E-N amenable to you? A-O-R-D-E-N? O-O-N. O-N, maybe? What's the common spelling? A-N. A-N. So there's a first name and then there's a last name. J-O-R-D-E-N is fine. That's fine. What was this in law school? Idian, Idian Sonans or something? It, it sounds <laughs> the same. It sounds the same. Uh, um, okay, Ms. Ms. Hollier, can you uh, bless that as in your client's best interest? I'm so sorry. I, I, I had to step out for a second. I apologize. What, what am I blessing? Um, if, if at all, the name changed to Taylor... Jordan Williams. Jordan is spelled J A. I'm sorry, J O R D E N. Y yes, um, I, I can if that is agreeable to the parties. Your Honor, prior to her agreement, could she please read her text? Oh, oh, um, okay. Hang on a second. Sorry. Wait, y'all are texting in court? Yes. Oh. Um, Oh, well, I, I, I agree. Taylor Bennett Williams is a beautiful name, too. And I love that for a middle name. So um, I, I would propose we'll that. With that. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. We think that's a great idea. <laughs> I think, Ms. Simeon, Mr. Williams, can you agree to that? You'll have to unmute. That's cool. That's her middle cool. name and Williams would be her last name. Yeah, that's a great cool. idea. Mr. Williams, I need you I, to bless this if you I, can. It's all Amy. She came up with it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I was thinking about it, but I, I didn't bring it up. We didn't Mr. Think about Williams, it. I need you to unmute, please. Ms. Uh, Ms. Simeon might be able to offer some help. I don't know. Well, okay. Uh, I agree because I thought of the name myself, but since I wasn't asked, then oh, I, didn't put, <laughs> I didn't put that out there. So that's still fine on behalf of myself and my brother. I guess we lost him. So, Taylor, I think it's pretty. 
Okay. I, agree. I think we got that figured out. Okay, so y'all, y'all take it down. <laughs> okay. All right. Great idea. Thank y'all very much. That's very good. I, that really very makes us happy. Thank you. Any anything else from anyone else? Your Just, Honor, if you have to delay the order because of trying to keep the department in, the terms and conditions would be effective today, correct? That's what I would ask. Well, let me let me see what Ms. Cleaver has, if anything, to add. I was just going to say during the hearing, Jasmine did reach out. Uh, the birth certificate has been approved. It's just a matter of it being sent directly to the Bennett's or being sent to us. Um, they would, of course, get their original, but we do need a copy for our records. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm likely about to order that changed again. <laughs> um, okay. It is. I, I would draw my objection to a trial amendment because it's not even needed. <laughs> okay, thank you for um, excusing me from deciding that. Uh, let's try one more time to get Mr. Mr. Williams. Earlier, his uh, device would hardly stay on mute. Yes, sir. I've, I've your honor, if I can just get him to testify through my phone, I've got him. Let's let's okay. try it. So the only thing that I want to make sure, and your and everybody else is so far in agreement. So I need to find out from you if you are in agreement to change Taylor's name to Taylor. No, I, I, I that's the best thing to do. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Williams. I'm going to keep you on the phone in case we need something else, but. I'm gonna mute you, okay? I figured something happened. All right, Mr. Williams, just hang on. Based uh, upon the uh, evidence and best interest and the safety of the child, uh, the court does hereby appoint um, uh, the father, uh, Kenneth uh, Williams, and the uh, intervenors and placement, uh, Courtney and Daryl Bennett, as joint managing conservators. Uh, the latter will be the primary uh, custodian, will have the exclusive right to determine the residency of the chil uh, child. Uh, the court uh, approves um, of, as in the best interest of the child, uh, the possession, the visitation, the access uh, set forth and agreed to uh, between Mr. Williams and the Bennetts and even Ms. Simeon uh, on the record uh, earlier uh, today. The uh, As to the mother, based on the evidence and best interest uh, and safety of the child, uh, does find that there would be uh, a significant impairment uh, in her physical and emotional well-being and development uh, were she named a managing conservator. Moreover, the court finds that it would be uh, a, a detrimental to name her a, a possessory conservator uh, because of the same um, significant impairment uh, of her physical and emotional development and well being. So the court uh, uh, names the mother a non-possessory uh, and uh, declines naming her uh, as a conservator uh, at, at all. And the court finds that that restriction uh, is in the best interest and for uh, the safety of the child. Uh, the court uh, finds a good cause to not order the mother to pay child support. Uh, the court does order the father, Kenneth Williams, to um, apply, um, obtain, and maintain uh, Medicaid for the child, if possible. 
uh, if he is unable to do that uh, after good faith and due diligence, then he must provide a letter of denial or the like to the Bennett's so that they can um, provide insurance for the child, uh, hopefully at uh, no cost or not much of it, an additional cost with that letter of uh, denial. Um, so the court finds good cause to limit uh, the father's duties relative to child support insurance to, to that. The court uh, does find, uh, pursuant to the evidence and the best interests of the child, that the child's name should be and hereby is chain again the court finds that in the best interest of the child uh, the department uh, will be uh, dismissed as a party um, so shall uh, all of the court appointments with uh, the the gratitude of the court the court uh, additionally orders uh, the birth certificate uh, to uh, be changed and reflect uh, the order of the court herein. Court finds that's in the best interest of the child. Okay. Ms. Uh, McPherson, uh, it appears that uh, you've almost already drafted this. How would uh, 3-8, March the 8th, be for submission? Your Honor, I will definitely uh work diligently to do that your other issue your honor i didn't hear you say um is there any contact between the mother and the child thank thank you for that um so the the court uh, does find again based on the evidence best interest and safety of the child um and and in accordance with the court's previous order for some months now finds that uh any contact, direct or indirect, um, between the mother and the child would be uh, detrimental uh, to the child's physical and emotional development, uh, if not uh, endangering to the child. So orders uh, no contact. As in the best interest of the child. Bear with me just a moment. Okay. Um, Ms. McPherson. Yes, Your Honor. So you, you may need to marshal your wordsmith skills a bit, uh, but I'm going to uh, include a provision relative to that, to that no contact order that uh, should uh, there come a time when the Bennetts, and I'm going to limit this limit this to the Bennetts, this would be a, a sole exclusive right. Should there come a time in the future, um, a year, 15 years, uh, that they believe it's in the child? best interest to have contact they make they may make that call so make it mean that and sound better than that ms mcpherson i, I i'm going to be sending this out to to others <laughs> i know i know and the court finds that's in the best interest of the child. I, um, I, uh, I think we all would trust them implicitly to make the right call and the best call, if and when that comes. And I think at some level we we all hope that it that could one day perhaps. Um, I I simply as a maybe a something akin to a, a point of privilege. Uh, 
just I want to thank. Uh, please forgive me. For what, Judge? We love you. <laughs> yeah, that's why we. Yeah. yeah, I mean that. You know, we we feel the same way. Thank you. You got a great it's, heart, it's, Judge. Well, you know, uh, I want to thank everybody for their great heart for this child and. Um, the Bennetts, Mr. Williams, Miss Simeon, um, for um, loving this child enough to come to this agreement. Um, I know you're going to get us all crying today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And thank you so much for the compassion for my client. Um, instead of seeing yes. her as a loss, I appreciate yes. you seeing hope in her future. My heart goes out to her. We want the best for her. I think I, across the board, we have seen that uh, compassion and sympathy and empathy for her. Yes. yes. Um, a after all, she she gave you all. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, Taylor. About her. Williams. So. Can I show you a picture, Judge? You you may. Oh, please. Get it. <laughs> Can you see? Oh. Can you see it? Oh, wow. Yes. She is a she is a vibrant little child. She brings joy to everyone that meets her. That's the most my wife dresses her up like it's Easter every day. <laughs> well, that, that's the most beautiful thing I've seen in in, in a minute. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. You. So um uh these uh these uh all of our sweaty eyes yes so i think mr crocker uh tried to cut up an onion <laughs> <laughs> i like his haircut what are you talking about <laughs> it's, it's just sand it's just sand in my eye it's all, it's sand. <laughs> okay okay any anything else from anyone else so if i didn't finish saying submission three eight at nine if that's not enough time uh will uh will certainly uh consider extending can that. we let uh with with our gratitude can we let everyone go well unless they're on the palat case okay so if you're on the palat case so okay so miss simeon mr and mrs bennett <laughs> thank you all very much I have a question, judge thank you very very much yes oh. Ms. Simeon. yes uh i know uh miss michelle asked us asked earlier stated earlier but is this effective for first first uh and third effective on march 3rd today right your honor it's effective today yes. the agreement that's correct that's okay correct. okay thank you yes ma'am thank you thank, thank you, you miss simeon thank you miss thank simeon thank you, thank you, thank you uh, mr bennett thank you very much thank you all thank you you're you're excused thank you okay. It, thank you all. All right. So.